Hello everyone, today I will show you how easy it is to learn Swift UI if you already know Jetpack Compose. So let's start with the variable declaration. So if you want to declare a static variable in Swift, you need to say let instead of vol. And if you want to create a mutable vari variable, you simply say var in both languages. And now let's start by creating a stateful variable. So in Android, we say, let's say var counter by remember mutable state of and pass a value and we need to import the required things and now if we go in xcode we need to simply annotate this with state and say counter and put a type and let's add the default value of zero so as you know in jetpack compose the modifiers are straight into the composable so we say modifier and we put everything here so let's say film max size or something and it doesn't matter but the swift UI modifier placement is different because we after we close the view we put a point here a dot and we can style the component here as you can see it's bold background is red and so on in android if we want to declare a layout that things are overlapping each other we simply say box okay in swift ui we need to say let me remove these things and we need to say z stack and this is the same thing as the box and in android if we want to create something a layout vertical that aligns th things vertically we say column and in Swift UI we simply use vStack. Let's say we want to create a row and we want the name of the user to be in the left and the score to be in the right. So we will have something like this, let's say user. And here we will have the score. And to separate them, we need to say fill max size, uh, fill max width, sorry, and put the horizontal arrangement, arrangement spaced between, and this is how it will look. Let me put this in a preview. So preview, fun, my preview, mounted this with composable, and add it here, build and refresh. Okay, so to separate these things we need we needed to say horizontal arrangement space between and make the row fill max size in swift UI, if we want to do the same thing we simply use the h tag and let's say text user and score and to fill the whole space between them we need to say spacer and this is how we create the same thing in jet uh, in swift UI, sorry now, if we want to create a scrollable column in Jetpack Compose, we simply say lazy column, and here we pass a number of items, let's say 10, and here we create the composable. And in Swift UI, if we want to do the same thing, we need to say scroll view, and now we need to use our for each, and let's say 0 until 10, and open the brackets and we need to also get the index from here and let's say text and pass the index here oh, and I need to make this a string so okay if you for example want to create a different type of list we need to say list and let's say we have two items so item 1 and item 2 as you can see shows up differently and if you want to customize the list you have to use the list style and for example we want to make it plain or uh, grouped or inset grouped and so on now let's go to grids so if you want to create a grid in jetpack compose you will simply say if you want it vertical lazy vertical grid and if you want it to be horizontal lazy horizontal grid right in Swift UI, we have the lazy V grid and lazy H grid. So let's say lazy V grid 
and create the columns and this is an array let's open the curly brackets here and put this on a new line and now let's say grid item and this is flexible so the first column is flexible and we don't need to specify the minimum and maximum and the second column will be your fixed 100 okay i should copy the for each but let's make one, one new so from 0 to 10 id is self get the id in and we need to say item and pass the id and if we want to style it a little frame max width infinity this will occupy the whole space available padding of 10 dp and the background color will be red okay so if you want to create the same grid in jetpack compose we need to say lazy vertical grid pass the columns so grid cells is fixed of three and now we need to create items let's say we want an items get the index and create the text so the text is equal to index dot to string modifier is modifier fleet max width padding on of 10 dp background color red add another padding of 10 dp and now we need to create the span of the grid so let's say span open the curly brackets and let's get the item index and if the item index is even we create the grid item span of two and otherwise is one and let me open the preview and zoom it a little bit and as you can see it looks the same as the swift ui and in the swift ui it's a little easy to write because we simply pass a grid instead of creating this by checking if it's even or odd okay as you know in jetpack compose we already have predefined buttons with different styles styles like this one the simple one with a background color and the outline button but we have the field and so on but in swift ui we only have the text button and it looks sa the same as here so hi and it show the text and we will customize a button to to show you how you can do that but let's see how to create a button so it's almost the same thing and we need to say label and in the label field we create a new text and let's say hi we can also have different types of creating this button so we say the text here and here is the on click function let's put a comment here too and we also have another method in which we say the let me a uh, second the action the label and the role so the role of the button is destructive and this will make the button text red so wait a second to load the preview oh i forgot to add the comma okay as you can see the button turned in red and now let's see how we can customize this button to have a background color or to outline it okay so let's take this button and make it filled so padding of horizontal this is how you add the horizontal padding and say 20 the padding vertical will be of 10 the background color will be oops, black and we also want to make this round so corner radius is 30 okay and the last thing we have to do is to save the foreground style and this will change the color of the text to white and this is how you can add background to a button and now let's remove this and create one outlined so let's start by saying color black and now we need to say padding horizontal of 20 dp 
padding vertical. I don't know why I removed these because I sh I should have kept them. And now we need to say background white or let it like this and say overlay. And in the overlay, we need to create a rounded rectangle with a corner size of 30. Oh, corner radius, not corner size, corner radius 30. And here we need to say stroke black, oops, black and the line width is one. And as you can see, we have an outline button. Now in Jetpack Compose, if we want to add a photo, we simply say image and we need to create a painter and put the localized description. So painter are, are drawable and a random image from here. And in Swift UI, you want to create uh, an image it is similar to this one because we need to say image and here we also have system icons. So let's say house. And as you can see, we have a house. And if you want to get an image from the assets, you need to drag your asset here and put the name of the asset here. So let's say you have an image of coffee and you put the coffee here and the image will appear. Also, if you're interested in getting more icons for your iOS app, I highly recommend you to use the SF Symbols application developed by Apple. You will simply download it and double click and it's installed and you will have the full library of icons and you can put the name of the icons in your application and you're ready to go. Now, if you want to display a network image in your Jetpack Compose app, you will have to implement the coil and after that you have to use the async image. But in SwiftUI, we don't need another dependencies or packages. We simply say async image paste the URL of the image. So you create an URL and here is the string and is your, your URL with your image. Now let's try to create a navigation bar in Compose to have a co reference code to see how easy it is to do that in SwiftUI. So we need to say navigation bar item is selected. Let's say put, uh, let's say true, put arguments on separate lines because we don't have an ultra wide monitor to see everything. And here we put icons that are rounded and let me put this on a new line because I don't see is null rounded and let's put the person. Okay, and now let's zoom this a little zoom out. Okay, copy this and this is not selected and put home here. Okay, as you can see, the approach is a little bit messy, but in SwiftUI is way cleaner. So let's jump in Xcode and now let's say tab view and open the curly brackets and simply say text and we can have home. And here we say tab item. And here we just add an image. So image system name house and the text. And now let's duplicate this and let's say person. And here we say person dot fill. And this is person. Let's say we want to create a loading indicator. So in Jetpack Compose, we simply need to say circular progress indicator. And if we want a linear progress indicator, this is doable too. progress to 0.4 F and it doesn't show up that much, but you understand. Now let's go here and let's say we want to create the same thing, the circular progress view. We simply say progress view. And if we want to create a linear progress indicator, we simply say a style and here we pass linear and we have a line of progress. And the last thing is the navigation. So if we want to navigate in Jetpack Compose, we simply create the nav controller, pass that to the nav host, create a start destination, and the composable is our screen. And if we want to navigate to another screen, we call the nav controller navigate method. Now let's implement the navigation in SwiftUI. So we need to open the app 
and here we create a navigation stack and this is very similar to the nav host and in order to make this screen uh, navigable we need to say navigation view and open the curly brackets and now we need to create a button that navigates to another screen so navigation link and let's pass a title key so go to profile and let me remove this open the curly brackets and put on uh, text that says profile and if we click go to profile this opens a new screen this can be done differently so let's say we copy the go to profile text text copy this add the label here and open the curly brackets before and create a text and i forgot that it already has that that things so if we click on profile it does the same thing okay that's it and i hope that this brief introduction helped you in some way and if you enjoyed this video make sure to subscribe and like it to see more content like this and see you in the next video